Hey everybody, welcome back to Windy City Astrophotography. My name is Nick, and in this video we're doing something a little bit different, maybe a little bit uh, strange. We're going to be trying to add back in satellite trails that had been removed during the stacking process for a fully finished astrophotography picture. Now this idea originally came to me while I was imaging the Witch Head Nebula. This was back in November of last year. And during that imaging time, I kept seeing all of these satellite trails, very short trails from geosynchronous satellites passing through the frame. Now, essentially every exposure I was getting some of these trails going through. And during the processing of the image, uh, I was taking a look at the rejection map and realized, wow, there was a whole lot that was uh, taken out there, not just the usual hot pixels and uh, cosmic ray hits and a stray satellite or two. This was a ton of satellites that had gone through this field of view. It wasn't unexpected for me, but I began to wonder, hmm, I wonder if there's a way to add those back in. So eventually I did, and I went through a process that I want to walk you through here. A lot of people had had questions about it. I had posted on uh, Facebook and Twitter, and also had done a, a YouTube short about this, putting these satellites back into the image, uh, just to get a kind of a cool, unique view of this part of the sky. And so I want to walk you through kind of how that worked. So first off, let's take a look at, uh, we're going to blink these images here, just look at how many satellites are going through this field of view. This is over the course of three hours, uh, shooting with red, green, and blue filters. Uh, shooting mono, so different uh, color images uh, coming through different channels that you can see. So a ton of them, you can see them, and we're going to look at this a little bit later on in the video. They're definitely geosynchronous satellites because they're not shooting all the way through the image uh, over the course of a one-minute exposure like you would see with uh, Starlink or other low Earth orbit satellite. These are distinct short trails over the course of a one-minute exposure. All right, so how do we go about getting these satellites into the final image? Let me show you my processed final image. Uh, this is before reorientation and everything and the mirror flip with the Rasa, but this is uh, the view. Um, yeah, I, I would uh, probably change a few things if I were to reprocess this right now, but uh, overall we're just going to go with this. So obviously no satellite trails, very clean, nicely processed image, Looks pretty good and uh, certainly great for about three hours of imaging time on the Witch Head Nebula. Now, how do we get those satellites back in there? Well, I originally tried just going for the rejection files. So you can get this uh, the rejection map basically of the pixels that have been rejected during the stacking process in PixInsight. Uh, that didn't end up being exactly what I needed. I needed a little bit more uh, signal, basically, to it in order for these things to uh, really show against the fully processed image. So let me show you basically the settings that I end up using. So we're going to go into weighted batch pre-processing here. I'm not going to go through the full uh, process here, but just showing you in lights in the integration parameters that I used. So usually this would be an average and actually auto for me, but generally it would choose a sigma clipping setting in here for the stacking. So sigma clipping essentially is looking for the outliers. So if there's something that only occurs in one frame, maybe it's a satellite trail, maybe it's an airplane going through, a cosmic ray hit, uh, even some of the, um, the hot pixels, and it's a rejection algorithm here, it's able to get rid of those in the final stack and give you a nice clean image. However, I didn't want that to happen for this. So what I ended up doing is I picked no rejection on the algorithm and then maximum for the combination. And this ended up giving me a pretty good result. And we're going to exit there. Now, let's take a look here. This is a stack of all of my good light frames. I took out some of the ones with clouds and things like that. Uh, but here we have the good light frames. This is a synthetic luminance, you might say. It's um, uh, three hours essentially worth of light, uh, all put together into one grayscale image. Then I also stacked that without rejection and using the maximum setting. And here is what we came up with there. So the satellites are still in, and this is all of the satellites over the course of those three hours. There's also a few sections here where you can see some hot pixels as we were dithering you can see where those wandered around. There's also a few cosmic ray hits and things over the course of three hours as well. And this is actually also an airplane 
that went through right up here. Now this is where the magic of PixInsight really comes into play. We're gonna use pixel math here. And what we're gonna do is essentially subtract this image without satellites from the image with satellites, and it's gonna leave us with the satellites. Now I will say one very important thing to do before you were to do any of this is to register these images to your processed final image. This is similar to using Starnet to take away the stars. Right, we're taking away the stars, messing with the nebulosity, and then putting the stars back in. Here, we want to have made a full image. We want to have been able to uh, do all the different processes in PixInsight, get it looking as good as possible, and then just layer on those satellites without having manipulated them, without having them uh, having been altered whatsoever by some of these uh, little more elegant things that we're doing with a regular processing of the Witch Head Nebula. So these are all registered to each other. So if we were to uh, just overlay it, just so you can see, yeah, perfectly registered. And this one as well, let's just, oops, let's just match the, uh, the framing of this, just so we can show these are registered and that's a very important step to take. So nice and registered. All right, so how do we get this to work? We're gonna put our finished RGB up there. We're going to open up pixel math. What we're gonna do is subtract the image without satellites from the image with satellites. And what we'll be left with are just the satellites. So let's go to the expression editor. And we're gonna try and find here, this is a pretty big, big thing here. So we want to subtract, yeah, we'll do with sats minus without sats, okay? And then we do want this to create a new image. And I'd like it to be, I just want to specify it to be grayscale, all right? And here we go. So here is the image. And we're going to call this uh, satellite trails. So I could clean this up a little bit more. You could do a curve transformation or something to try and get a, a little bit of this gradient out. Uh, we could have been a little bit more careful with gradient uh, mitigation earlier on in the process. But quick and dirty here, we're just going to uh, try and slap this onto our finished RGB image. So a few things you could do to clean it up, but for our purposes here, let's just add this. So we have satellite trails, which we want to add to our processed RGB. So let's put up a new expression here in, in uh, pixel math. So I want satellite trails plus, this is processed RGB, where did this go here? There we go. We hit okay. In this case, still creating a new image, but I want this one to be RGB color. And we apply. And there you have it. This is a, a pretty awesome view, actually. Uh, even though it's a, a little bit a little bit messy in a couple places, uh, we can see those satellites, a record basically of all the satellites that went through that field of view uh, as we went. Now, in case you're not familiar, this particular part of the sky is where these geosynchronous satellites pass through from roughly mid-northern latitudes. The geosynchronous satellites orbit pretty much directly above the equator of the Earth, and they're synchronized with Earth's rotation, so they take 24 hours to orbit once. They're about 22,000 miles above Earth's surface. Now, as they orbit, they're going to essentially stay in the same part of your sky. So these things are, are orbiting around the Earth, but as Earth orbits, they stay, they're kind of hovering over one spot on Earth. Now, as you go north or south of the equator, where they are in the sky, where they appear in the sky is going to change. So you might find that some images of the Witch Head Nebula with satellites. Uh, here, I've got them kind of going through her chin. They might go through her eye, uh, further up past her forehead, depending on exactly how you see the face of the witch. And that depends on the latitude of the observer, the imager in this case. This also happens around the Orion Nebula, and there's a few other deep sky objects, uh, depending on your latitude, once again, where this band of geosynchronous satellites is gonna go. Now, one more trick here that I used for this. Because I was mo uh, imaging with monochrome, I'm using my ASI 1600 NM, 
I was able to do a little trickery in order to get some color to these satellite trails. So once again, we've got our processed RGB. So before I had taken the red, green, and blue all together and created a essentially synthetic uh, luminance with the satellites. Well, what I did in the second case here is I went just with the red, separately stacked those together without rejection, the green, and then the blue. So here's the red, so you can compare the two. See a lot more satellites here in the uh, RGB, and then quite a bit fewer with the red. However, if you do that with all three together and then assign the red to the red channel, green to the green, and blue to the blue, you end up with something that looks like this. Let's compare these two. You get the satellite trails on the left separated by the channel, the color filter that was on, uh, on when it was uh, being imaged, when it was captured. And on the right, we've got uh, just luminance. Can't tell the difference between the channels. They're all just white. Well, you can add this to your final RGB image. You get something that's, uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit more creative, a little bit more of an interesting uh, view of these satellites going through. Maybe a little bit uh, 80s, 90s laser tag, something like that, going through the Witch Head Nebula. So uh, unique, definitely. Maybe not quite to my taste, but uh, well, they certainly stand out in that case. One more thing I want to look at, and then we're going to talk about geosynchronous satellites. I also, when I'm blinking through images, I do this even when I'm not looking for a particular uh, bit of, um, of satellites going through. I always blink just to see what I might find. I was able to find a meteor going through that looked pretty interesting. Let's see if I can find it here. There it is. All right, let's go back. Yeah, excellent. So if you can see... There. So this diagonal line right here, this is a meteor going through the field of view. So kind of faint, but right in here. But what's interesting is there's actually a little wisp, a little bit of a vapor trail coming off here. I'm not sure how clear that is, but if I blink back and forth, I think you'll see it pretty clearly. The line appears, the line of the meteor, but also that vapor trail. Now that's a one minute exposure. And over the course of several minutes, watch this, we're going to go forward in time. That vapor trail actually dissipated across the frame. So if we go back and then forward once again, you can see that dissipation occurring. So notice here, this little brightening right in here isn't in the frame before or after. That's a kind of a conglomeration of a bunch of vapor in that part of the sky. So kind of interesting. Um, you never know quite what you're going to find in these blinked images. Let's go back just a little bit and show you that. Again, there it goes right through. Pretty cool stuff. Now I do want to address something that a lot of people have asked about in the comments. So this was on uh, Facebook and Twitter and also in the YouTube short that I posted about uh, adding these satellites back in. A bunch of people said, well, wait a second, these can't be geosynchronous satellites. These are moving during the image. Geosynchronous satellites would be remaining stationary, which at first glance is a totally understandable thing to think. You say, well, wait a second, they should be perfectly stationary as you're taking the image. Here's the trick though. Because I'm imaging with a telescope on a mount that's tracking the sky, the stars remain stationary in the field of view, right? That's what we want. We want good tracking, good guiding, and have those stars be pinpoints. And the geosynchronous satellites trail just a bit. Not a lot. It's not going through like a Starlink would or something. You wouldn't see it shooting straight through the frame. It's just a little bit. In fact, let's take a look at the length of these trails. Here's a good example here. I'll skip in a frame there. Yeah, there we go. So let's look at this one on the lower left. That's just getting in. 
These are one minute exposures. That's one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute, five minute, six minute, seven minutes, and maybe a little bit more, maybe seven and a half minutes. So seven and a half minutes to cross this field of view. Okay, how big is this field of view? Well, I looked it up. The height of my uh, sensor in the sky uh, using the Ross 8 in the ASI 1600 mm Pro is 1.91 degrees. The 1.91 degrees, there's 360 degrees around a circle for one full orbit. So what is 360 divided by 1.91? It's 188.48, called 188.5. So 188.5 of these fields of view across the sky would bring you right back around to where you started. Now it took us, what, seven and a half minutes for a satellite to cross this. So seven and a half minutes times 188.48. Let's just keep this up and multiply that by 7.5. This is the number of minutes that it would take the satellite to cross that many frames. To cross 188.5, which would be 360 degrees, it would be 1,413 minutes. How many hours is that? Let's divide by 60. 23.56. We've done a little bit of rounding here. There's going to be a little bit of error somewhere, but certainly uh, close enough to 24 hours, one full circle around there. And you might still be wondering, well, why? Why, why, why would these satellites be trailing in the view? Well, think of it like this. Here is the Earth, and it's turning. All right, Earth spins on its axis, so over the course of the night, it's going like this. And also over the course of the night is a geosynchronous satellite going through here. It's remaining over the same spot on Earth, locked with Earth's rotation. Now, if my satellite, if my telescope, rather, were just pointed straight up or wherever in the sky as Earth rotated, it would be always be pointed at that geosynchronous satellite that's hovering right up here. But my scope isn't doing that because it's tracking the sky. It's looking at something right up on the ceiling there. So as Earth rotates, my scope remains pointed in the same spot. So the geosynchronous satellite is kind of moving through the field of view of my scope as it remains stationary relative to the sky, but it's moving relative to the Earth. So a geosynchronous satellite, which is not moving relative to the Earth, would appear to trail through the field of view. So it's definitely not quite intuitive, but once you begin to think about what's actually moving, it begins to make a little bit of sense. So these are in fact geosynchronous satellites trailing through this field of view. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, odd little jaunt through uh, a little bit of a, an odd process in PixInsight. I certainly don't claim to know everything there is to know in PixInsight. And uh, if you happen to know a better way of doing this, maybe a better uh, better way to um, use the stacking algorithm or a different way to combine the frames in order to get this um, looking even better, that would be great. I was pretty happy with how this turned out. I'm looking forward to maybe the Orion Nebula or another region of the sky where some of these satellites pass through without trying this again. But certainly let me know in the comments if you've got a, a better idea of how to do this, and uh, who knows, maybe I'll try it out in a future video. Of course, if you found this video useful, definitely give it a like. That's going to help others find it useful as well. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Windy City Astrophotography. Clear skies, and we'll see you next time.